Today marks day seven, I think, of our bathroom renovation. And uh, yesterday we kind of got a, a, a mismatch of uh, things done, different projects, some mudding, a little bit of drywall. We started painting some trim. Today's gonna be kind of the same thing. We got just kind of a variety of things we have to get done. A lot of prep work before we can just start painting and putting everything in. So we're not quite at the point of installing everything yet, like tile or the flooring or all that. We're still getting it prepped. But I think we'll get a lot done today too. So anyway, I'll start by sanding my drywall mud from yesterday and I'll probably have to apply one more coat. My drywall mud from yesterday, that first coat, looks okay from a distance, but up close you can see the screw holes still have little dips. My seam looks terrible there. It's gonna to need to be sanded and filled in a lot more. And then uh, my corner here is gonna need a lot more mud and a lot more sanding today. It looks terrible. It needs tons of work. So those are my main uh, main concerns today to sand and then I'll have to re-mud those areas. But I also am going to sand the little small amount of touch-up I did a few days ago. But I think all this will sand up really quick. I just have it super thin so I think it'll be no problem. Also, uh, you may be wondering why I didn't tape and mud the corners. And I kind of am cheating here. You probably should do it but we're going to have trim up on the ceiling and there's going to be trim along the wall because you have paneling and the door so it's going to be covered up anyway so i think i can get away without it but uh, normally you'd probably want to do that so anyway first things first i'll go ahead and sand all this make a huge mess and then remud those two areas I went over all the shower seams just real quick just to knock down any high spots but I didn't do any crazy sanding on it. I think it's ready to go. I forgot I had a little bit up there in the ceiling I had to do too but I think it's it's fine now. And in this corner I mean it doesn't look good but it is way better than it was. I'm gonna try to do a really good second coat and maybe that's all I can get away with. I really like to do that because I, uh, I would start waterproofing the shower, but I feel like we're probably just gonna go ahead and come out to the wall or pretty close to it, because I think our tile's gonna come out almost all the way. So it'd be nice to go ahead and, and have that done, but I can't do that when there's mud on there. So hopefully that'll go by pretty quick. But then all the walls over here are totally fine and uh, ready to go. So I'll go ahead and throw on a little bit more mud up there on that seam and a couple of screw holes, and then uh, go over this corner. And uh, hopefully I'm done with this. I really don't like doing drywall. And uh, the only thing worse than drywall is doors. And I realized that we're gonna have to move this door a little bit. Because we bumped the wall out, you can see that the door frame is sunk in. So we're gonna have to take the door off the hinges and then pull out the frame actually slides right here in the middle. We'll have to slide it out and readjust it. So there's a good chance this door is probably never gonna shut quite the same again because I am terrible at doors as well. So there's the mud on the drywall and I had it nice and smoothed out but then I decided to go really heavy again right over the seam. I'd rather do more sanding than have to uh, put another layer on because I just don't want to waste the time on that. And then the corner here I did the same thing. I went pretty heavy. I covered this whole thing. I think as long as I sand it okay and don't gouge it, it will be good. So this looks way better than it did. So. Anyway, now that these are done, I need to let them dry. I probably won't be able to touch it till tomorrow. So hopefully I can sand it tomorrow and then uh, clean all the walls, the ceiling, everything, get them all dust free. And then I'll probably start waterproofing the shower. While that mud's drying, I decided to go ahead and figure out shelves over here so I can get something done. And uh, I'm gonna build them out of the wood that I got from that huge tabletop I picked up off the side of the road. The other day it has kind of a bad stain on it right now so I'm hoping I can sand all that off and then put some homemade wood stain on there to get that kind of brown or gray look. But for size I was just measuring this out and an absolute max on our drywall is about 27 inches but we're going to have door trim here and it has to cover up this kind of end of the old paint job there so that ends at about 25 and a half so an absolute max we could do is about 24 but I think that looks a little bit too close. So I think we decided to go with 22. So it'd be from here to the end of the measuring tape. So I think that'll look pretty good. 
And uh, I think we're just gonna do two shelves. I mean, we could do a third, but it'd be so high up the wall, it'd be kind of hard to get to. And then uh, for brackets, I'll just do really simple off the shelf brackets from Menard. I kind of like the looks of a certain style they have there. I think that'd be kind of cool. So now I'll show you what we're planning on doing for the mirror. As for the mirror above the vanity, uh, we were kind of messing with it. You probably can't quite see it in camera, but the vanity is going to end down here at about 35 and a half inches. So we measured like a soap bottle and like a um, toothbrush dispenser and all that. And those are roughly about eight inches tall when you have stuff in them. So the bottom of our mirror, we decided to go about 10 inches up. So that's what that line is right here. All right, so we also only have about 30 inches wide. It's like 30 and a half inches between wall to wall. So we don't want the mirror to be too massive. So I think we're gonna go with 24 inches wide. All right, and then from that line, and we wanna go up. Let me see if I can kind of get the camera to show it a little better. All right, so we're gonna go above that, and you can kind of see up here where the light is gonna mount. It's got the big five inch ring. If we hang, because the light can be hung down or it can point up. If it hangs down, it's gonna to be too low, so we have to point it up. And we want a pretty good sized mirror, so we're gonna come way up here. I think you can see that. But I uh, drew a line up here, and that is going to be 28 inches tall. So it would be a 28 by 24. And the design, I'm still kind of deciding. We saw a really cool one at Menards and uh, when we were first looking at stuff. And, that, and then we went back the other day, and it wasn't there anymore. And anyway, it was uh, just a square frame, the mirror behind it. So it was a wood frame, kind of stuck out, I don't know, about four inches or so. And there's a shelf going across it. So, you know, it was the big square frame, almost like a shadow box, mirror mounted on the back, and then there's also a wood shelf going down about a quarter of the way across. Really cool design. I thought of replicating it because it was like 60 bucks or something like that. I could make it for about $4 because I have a $4 mirror downstairs I could cut up and I have a bunch of free wood in the basement. If we don't do that, we're still kind of deciding, but we will go with a 24 by 28 and it uh, should look pretty cool. Now that we have the shelves figured out and the mirror above the vanity, the last thing we figured out is how to do a board and batten style ceiling trim. So we're gonna go all the way around the perimeter and then we're gonna kind of divide it in half just to make it simple. I don't have that wood yet, so we're actually gonna go do a run and do some shopping. We're gonna buy that wood. We need brackets for the uh, shelf. We might need a few things for the mirror, a few accessories and things like that. So we'll do uh, some uh, last minute shopping here and then come back and then I'll probably start messing with the uh, cutting down the shelves and figure them out. I'll try to build the mirror today too. And then uh, we need to like prime and paint the trim and then start painting the uh, floor trim that we primed yesterday. We just got back from spending a couple hours doing some shopping. We ended up getting all kinds of stuff. And uh, one of the things I bought was some wood to make the uh, ceiling trim. Now I was just gonna use one by threes, just to keep it real simple. But the one by threes at the store are in terrible condition, really bad, <laughs> some of the worst I've ever seen. So I grabbed one by sixes instead and uh, I'll just have to rip them down on my table saw. Also, I'm going to make the shelves out of the uh, wood from that tabletop. That uh, tabletop, it was all just kind of screwed together from the bottom. So when I took it apart, they had a bunch of different size slats. And this one is actually made out of uh, three two by fours. So anyway, I'll chop it down and then hopefully I can sand all this old finish off because we don't want that color. So anyway, that's what I'll start doing next. So I gotta say, sanding is no fun. It is one of those things that is so monotonous and boring, it takes forever. But it has to get done, because especially on cheap you know, wood like this that you buy, it is always so rough. I've tried painting it without sanding it, it looks terrible. Even with sanding, it still doesn't look super great, but it'll look pretty good. I mean, it takes forever. I'm sanding the, the big side here, and then both you know, small edges, and then I'm also doing the corners on both edges here and it is taking a long time but I'm getting close I'm almost there I'm almost ready to start making my shelves I finally got all those ceiling trim pieces cut and sanded so I can finally move on to the shelves and like I said this is a big plank from that table I found on the side of the road and I mentioned earlier that we were going to cut 22 inch shelves but the more I think about it I think I'm going to try 24 inches first if we can fit that I'd rather have the bigger space so I'll just chop it down and I'm going to do even more sanding um, I think I'm going to use this as the front because it's pretty clean. The back side is not looking so great. I don't have to sand it off. 
I'm not sure what I'm going to do to the top. If I had like a planer, I'd just run it right through, no problem. But I don't have one, so I guess I'll do it by hand. And uh, anyway, I'll go ahead and get this uh, all cut up. I thought about possibly adding like a distressed front edge to it to kind of make it look kind of cool. I, I still might do that, but I'll probably run it by my wife first. Um, she's probably going to want it smooth, but that could be kind of cool. I have an idea how to do that too. So anyway, I'll get these chopped down. I'll see if she likes that and then uh, smooth them out and see how they turn out. Normally when I cut boards, I cut a little bit off the end just to make sure it's a nice square cut. But this one, since it's made out of three two by fours glued together, there's actually a little bit of a split in this joint back here. So I'm cutting past that so that uh, we don't have a split. All right, and there we go, nice and clean. It looks pretty good. Alright, super simple. There's the first shelf, and I asked my wife if she wanted the distressed front edge, and like I thought, she said no, so I'll just sand it up. Hopefully I can get rid of the stain and uh, make it look pretty cool. And then uh, I'll probably put some homemade wood stain on there that has more of a gray, light brown look to it, which is what we want. And then uh, all we got to do is mount it later once the uh, walls are painted and all that. So, there we go. That was super easy. Just got to make one more. Alright, so this old piece of 120 I have on here is doing nothing to this stain, so it's pretty worn out from sanding all those other boards, so I'm going to throw a rough grid on there. I think I might have 60s, if not, I'll put on a, an 80. I think that'll really tear through it, and then I'll go back up to higher grit to smooth it out. There we go, 60 grit. Whoops. The Velcro is really nice on this little cheap Harbor Freight sander, too. I mean, eventually they wear out, but right now it's holding really nice and tight. Alright, let's see what this thing does. It's taking a while, but it's working, so I'll sit through it to both of them and sit here for another 30 or 40 minutes and get it done. I got all that stain sanded off, and then I went over them again with a 120 grit, and I think they're good enough for a shelf. So I'm going to wipe all that dust off, and then I'm going to put on some of this homemade wood stain that I made about 23 days ago, it looks like. Put a date on there. And uh, I guess we'll find out what it looks like. I think it should look pretty good. All right, here we go. It's the one bad thing about this stain, this iron acetate, is that over time it just darkens. You, I, I haven't found a way to really stop it, so you never quite know what it's going to look like until it's on there. But I think this looks pretty cool. I think it's going to have kind of a right in between a brown and a gray, which is what we're wanting. So I'll put this on and. Uh, coat all the sides and then let it dry and I completely forgot I cut those uh, trim boards earlier and I still got to get those prime before I lose all my white out here tonight so hopefully I can get that done and then uh, I don't think my mud is good enough to dry just yet but I'll check it here in a little bit so let me do these and we'll see how it turns out all right so I can finally prime these boards I noticed when I sliced them down my uh, table saw earlier that a lot of them sprung out and uh, bent up or you know kind of curved on me so hopefully I can still make it work. Uh, this stuff takes a while to dry so I'll probably only get one coat tonight. So I'll just do all the edges first and then lay them back down flat and just roll them with an extension hole on this. So, just a few more to go. I gotta get these done quick because I'm losing my light tonight. I'm gonna go back inside after this and see if my mud's ready to paint or ready to sand. I doubt it is, though. It was still a little damp earlier, but we'll see. Well, I just finished doing them and I am almost totally out of light. Those last couple of boards, it's hard to tell if I was putting paint on them or if I was missing spots. So, I guess we'll see tomorrow. And I'll have to put a second coat on there. So, I'm gonna go back up into the bathroom and see if that mud's dry and ready to sand. It probably won't be, but we'll see. I checked the mud and I'm just not ready to sand it yet, so I decided to go ahead and finish out these little shelves. So it, the um, homemade wood stain, the iron acetate dried, it always has kind of a chalky look to it. And I probably have bad lighting, but it almost has like a cedar look to it now. It's kind of a cool color. There's a little bit of a pink and a gray and a brown to it. So all I'm going to do is just put on some wipe on poly, some satin, and uh, probably about two coats. But when you put it on, this should darken up quite a bit. 
So let's see what happens here. Let's pour some on and wipe it around. Yeah, that's a pretty cool color right there. That's almost exactly what we wanted. Check that out, it's pretty cool. All right, so that's pretty much it for today. I got the shelves built and uh, still got another coat, but they look really nice. I got the ceiling trim cut and primed. It's gonna need a little more primer and paint tomorrow. And I also got the mud up today and I got the sanding done and all that. I still have, need to sand that last coat and uh, I'll do that tomorrow. So we're gonna hopefully get that done and really clean it up and probably start painting tomorrow and waterproofing the shower. And uh, I should build the mirror pretty soon too. I'm gonna finish it in the same color as the shelves, but I'm gonna build it a little bit different. I gave you a couple ideas earlier, but I come up with an even cooler idea I think I'm gonna try out. So that should be coming up pretty soon too. And I might even actually just make a totally separate video on how I build it. But anyway, this thing's starting to come along. We're in the like little tiny details that take a long time to do. But uh, once they're all kind of finished, then this thing will really start to get thrown together in the last couple of minutes. So anyway, that's it for today. And thanks for checking it out. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. I really appreciate that. If you liked it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. That really helps get it out in front of other people that might like to check it out too. And if you haven't subscribed, be sure to do that to keep up with more videos. And if you want to see some other projects I have, I have some here on the screen and down in the description below as well.